Statistics lie, especially summary statistics. They can get you into lots of trouble. One of the ways that happens is with the flaw of averages. Watch here to learn what that is and how to avoid it. This is the first video in my Statistics Lie series about how bad math and analyses can lead people astray and cause them to make poor decisions. If we haven't met before, I'm E.W. Hulbert, the analytics dude, and I put out content like this to help people learn the analytical skills and techniques they need to make a difference in their lives and business. Make sure to subscribe if that's the sort of thing that interests you. The term, The Flaw of Averages, comes from a book titled, guess what? The Flaw of Averages. And the author explains to us what that is with a theoretical example. Imagine you come across a river that's on average three feet deep. Is it safe to cross? Well, you don't know from that information. It could be only three feet deep and have a completely flat bottom. Or it could slope down to an area where it's six feet deep in the middle, so kind of iffy. Or it could have a big 10-foot hole in the middle, in which case you'd definitely drown. Or it could be three feet deep with the whitewater rapids, or teeming with snakes and gators. There's lots of reasons it wouldn't be safe to cross. The flaw of average is actually much bigger than just the average or mean. It involves all summary statistics. There's a famous example called Anscombe's Quartet, shown here, which shows four very different plots that have the exact same summary statistics. And Autodesk research took it one step further, or several steps further, with the Datasaurus Dozen. All 13 of these graphs, from the lines, to the circles, to the stars, to the T-Rex, all have the exact same mean, standard deviation, maximum, and minimum on two dimensions. The moral of the story is the best way to avoid the flaw of averages is to always visualize your data. What you think is a normal distribution or bell curve could actually be a raptor. But how does this happen in the real world? Well, let's see an example from Uber. Uber updated their algorithm to get people their rides faster. On average, the new algorithm did get people their rides faster, but they still rejected it. Why? Because of the flaw of averages, or in this example, how they referred to it, the perils of ignoring heterogeneity. Uber graphed their data, and the new algorithm, shown here in blue versus the existing in red, saw that most riders did get their rides faster but also some riders got theirs a lot slower. To dive deeper into this issue, Uber used something called quantile regression, where they take their data and break it into equal sized smaller groups called quantiles, and then compare how those groups fared from the old algorithm to the new algorithm. What they saw was that about 60% of the customers were getting their rides quicker, but that was mostly customers who were already getting their rides quickly. Customers who were waiting a long time would have to wait much longer. Uber looked at the data and then made their decision qualitatively. What they knew about their business and what psychological research shows is that people remember bad experiences much more strongly than good ones. They rejected the change because the 10 people who would have gotten a ride in three minutes and now got it in two are more than offset by the one person who would have gotten a ride in 10 minutes and now had to wait 20 or more. Is Uber right? I think so, but we'll never really know. That's the beauty and the tragedy of statistics in the real world. You need to make sure your methodology is correct, but even then, there's no textbook to check your answer against. I recommend reading the article Uber published about this, and I have the link below. It's technical enough that practitioners can get something out of it, but not so technical that non-nerds can't even read it. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. If you have comments or questions that I didn't address, please comment below and I promise I'll get to them. As I mentioned earlier, this video is part of a series, so stay tuned for the next several videos. And until next time, I'm E.W. Hulbert, the analytics dude. Thanks for watching.